look like the jolly blue jar. <laughs> on, <clears throat> on small things, um, bigger things often too. Just over 20 years ago, I had a call from an old friend who was then running a small investment company in uh, London. He explained that he'd been to see a great business in the Welsh Valleys, but it was too small an enterprise for them. But I should go and take a look. I said a trip to the Valleys was good, and we'd been there for a while, but what was it all about? Bear in mind, this is 20 years ago. He said, Welsh single malt whiskey. I asked him how much of it he drank, because in those days, that was a mad idea. If I wanted to lose money, I'd back a three-legged three racehorse. I mean, it was literally uh, unheard of. But he said, cool. He said, they're great people. So it was such a daft idea, I went. And I looked around this old ratty shed in the middle of nowhere. I agreed that the people were great, but I left convinced that it could never work. But it did play on my mind. I thought if by some miracle this was truly a world-class whiskey, then maybe, just maybe, it could work. How could I tell? Who wouldn't know these things? And the brainwave came to me, Edinburgh University. Now we all know the frustration of trying to get hold of the right people sometimes. Endless emails, phone calls not returned, takes weeks and weeks and we still don't get to the right people. Not this time. I called the main switchboard at Edinburgh University and asked to speak to their distilling department and the lovely Scottish lady on the end of the phone put me straight through to the head of distilling at Swansea University. A great chap called Pip Hills, who knew his stuff. I told him the story, he thought I was mad but I persuaded him to visit. And after three hours in the distillery of sniffing and nosing and tasting and spitting, all the various barrels, he declared he didn't believe it was only two years old, which it was at the time. And it was, he said, as good or better than any scotch at six or seven years old. In other words, it was, or at least had the potential to be world class. Different, but superb. 20 years later, we produce over a million bottles per year, and soon to be over 2 million bottles, and export to 40 countries around the world, major markets in France, Germany, the US, and increasingly in Asia. 20 years ago, there were no commercial distilleries in Wales. Today, believe it or not, there are over 200 commercial distilleries in Wales. Now, of course, it would be wrong to say that there wouldn't be any other distillery in Wales if it weren't for Pandera. But I think it is fair to say that Pendarian inspired people to realise that we could do this in Wales. And today Wales has a substantial and growing distilling industry. So two phone calls, a stroke of huge luck, and from small things. So it was around five years ago, I had a call from Swansea Council, who asked me to come in to discuss the auctions on a small piece of land I owned on the river. They were planning the distributive road, which is now finished, the Morgan Road, which goes out of town. And at the meeting, they rolled out the plan, the schematic of the site. And I pointed to the end, to the north end, by the Liberty Stadium, and I said, 20 years, sorry, 10 years ago, we looked at this site as a potential new distillery and visitor centre for Swansea. Eyes lit up around the room. Unbeknownst to me, they were in conversations with the Lottery Heritage Fund to refurbish the building. Because we had to dismiss the idea because it was just too expensive to do a great one listed building. So of course, whiskey distillery, copper stills, copper pumps, the incredible heritage of the copper quarter, it was just a match made in heaven. A few weeks later, the senior Swansea city uh, team came up to see us, the officers and the uh, politicians, and the plan was hatched. So five years. Oh, that's the old one. Five years and a lot of hard work later, 10 million pound plus of investment, and we are close to completion of a new one million bottle per year facility 
that would hopefully attract over 100,000 visitors a year to what was once a derelict wasteland. Hopefully again this has inspired others to invest and we've heard about Skylight today and they are coming to the area along with many others and they all have plans <coughs> to make and transform the landscape of Copper Quarter into something unrecognisable. I must convey our huge appreciation to all involved at Swansea City Council, uh, Rob Stewart, uh, Robert Francis Davis, Sue Mulberry, uh, Paul Ralph, uh, Tracy McNulty and many others from Swansea. I would team with Neil Quigley and Mike Cavanagh, who's, who's up there, uh, and also, of course, everyone else involved, including the contractors, weavers, and not least uh, the National Lottery Heritage Fund. This will be a world class facility, and of course, it will tell the story of whiskey, of the art and the science of making whiskey. But interwoven with this will be the rich and incredible history of the copper production industry in Swansea. So, one meeting. One stroke of luck, and again, from little things, big things come. I hope we can welcome you all to share a drama or two in the very near future. Thank you.